hello everybody. Um, I already shot a video today, so if I look similar, that's why. I always need to say that. Um, I did change my lipstick, however, because I realized that I had lipstick on my teeth that entire video. Red lipstick is such a bitch. Like, it's so in this season, but it's a bitch to wear that. It's like all over my teeth. Now, I'm going to do a video about something called sleep paralysis. Um, I took my time with this video because I want to do a little poking around and a little bit of research about sleep paralysis only because I didn't want to sound like a complete idiot when I put the video up. Sleep paralysis as far as being a paranormal phenomenon is very controversial. There are people who will sit here and argue with me that it is a medical phenomenon, normal, natural, and there's people who will say it's paranormal. As far as I go, I have my own opinion on it, and it's kind of a skeptic opinion, sort of an I don't know as of right now opinion, but I can only tell you my experiences with it and sort of what I've learned during some research that I've done in the past few weeks. What I think is a good idea is if you guys have had sleep paralysis and you want to make a video response to this or just tell me in comments what has happened to you. It might help us a little bit try to figure it out. Um, I also don't want you guys to think that all of the medical or scientific community thinks that sleep paralysis is natural and normal. Some actually do believe there is sort of a paranormal side to it, but of course it's not been proven yet, so that's that. Now when I say sleep paralysis, um, I'm just going to try to explain it a little bit to you. I think what everybody experiences, they are going to describe differently, but I will describe it as I have had it. Um, basically what it is, is you wake up from sleep and you're just in a complete state of paralysis. It's sleep paralysis. Again, I did say you wake up. So as far as your mind goes, you're completely awake but you're not moving. Now, the medical community likes to say that sleep paralysis is a natural part of REM sleep, um, REM sleep, rapid eye movement sleep, and that it occurs when you're either falling asleep or waking up. That's why I said you wake up and you're paralyzed. So basically they say that I am not yet awake, but I'm waking up. Sleep paralysis can last from several seconds upwards into several hours. I don't know any people personally who have ever had sleep paralysis for several hours, but it's been documented and I don't know how they deal with that because medically speaking, sleep paralysis can cause you to have horrible, vivid hallucinations that are terrifying. While you're in these hallucinations, you have an acute sense of danger that you're going to be hurt. It's just not nice. You cannot move, so obviously you're scared. A lot of the times, medically speaking, while you're in sleep paralysis, you will have fanciful and dreamlike characters or objects in the room with you. Sometimes you'll have people, sometimes you'll have strange things floating around you, sometimes you'll see ghosts, sometimes you'll see aliens, sometimes you'll see, you know, just people that you know aren't there. Medically speaking, you're hallucinating. I just keep saying medically speaking because I want to let you guys know that we're talking about how the scientific community describe sleep paralysis right now. Now because scientists call this hallucinations during sleep paralysis, um, sometimes they use this to explain away the phenomenon of ghost, the phenomenon of alien abductions, and in some cases they've actually used this to explain away some cases of child sexual abuse. I don't know how I feel about that because I think that's just not right because that's one person's word against the other, but I felt I needed to say that because that's what I found out during my studies. So to recap, basically you're paralyzed, 
but you're dreaming while you're aware of your surroundings and hallucinating about fanciful people and objects in the room with you. Sounds fun, but it's not. I've had sleep paralysis since I was, you know, a young girl, maybe a teenager. Um, my sleep paralysis always started when I lived in my parents' house. It was different than when I live here. It always started where I would start in first person form. So I would be able to see what was in front of me at the bottom of the stairs at my parents' house, because that's where I was living. And I would be looking up at the stairs and I would actually in first person form rush up the stairs. When I got to about the midway point of the stairs, I would jump over the banister again in first person form. And right over the banister, if I did that, was the room that I stayed in directly across the way. I would rush into that room, still in first person form, and jump right on top of my body. When I jumped on top of my body, my body, myself, would wake up and I would still feel somebody on top of me and I couldn't move. Now. I always slept on my stomach as a teenager and so I picture this. I'm on my stomach completely awake after having that dream and somebody's on top of me on my back holding me down and I can't move and I'm panicking inside because I'm conscious of this. I'm screaming to myself what the hell is going on but I can't do anything about it and that would last probably about a minute and then finally I'd be able to move, start moving some limbs and everything would go back to normal and I would just be like holy shit and fall back to sleep. Now that is exactly how it would pretty much happen every single time I had sleep paralysis while I lived in that house um, and I probably had it maybe once or twice a month I think during my mid-teens and then it stopped. I had it a couple times living in this house and I'm gonna tell you it's it changed and it became different and I'll tell you one story that I already told you guys but if you didn't see that video I'll tell it again um, and it's the most recent one I haven't had a sleep paralysis since this I was actually just fell asleep and when I fell asleep I was laying on my side but when I woke up it was only a few minutes later um, but when I woke up I was completely on my back with the covers off of me and I couldn't move now I was completely paralyzed couldn't move but I knew I was awake I could think and talk inside but part of me thought I was dreaming but part of me thought I was awake so it was weird and there was a man standing at the side of the bed talking I have no idea what he said I have no idea if he was talking to me if he was saying something whatnot and I just did not want him there I couldn't move I tried everything in my power to move and finally I could move my right arm to hit my husband awake to try to get him to wake me up now the thing is, I managed to hit him, but I don't think my arm actually moved, but eventually he rolled over because he heard me like making noises, I guess, and he woke me up. Whether it was a real sleep paralysis or a dream, I don't know, but it seemed like a sleep paralysis to me at that time. So this brings us to some paranormal explanations for sleep paralysis. Some people, when they say they have sleep paralysis, are very insistent that they are being abducted by extraterrestrials. And they say this because during their sleep paralysis they see a light coming in through their window, either a very bright white light or a blue light, and they actually feel their body lift up from the bed. And most of the time they actually see the greys or the aliens in the room with them. So that can coincide sort of with the hallucinations that science say you can have during sleep paralysis the body lifting up, I don't know how you explain that. I kind of have a theory but I don't want to say it right now. Um, so that's why some people think it might be alien abduction. Some people say that you have sleep paralysis because you have been put under a spell 
by somebody who is from afar because they can't physically reach you. They use a binding spell to bind you down during your sleep and they decide that they're going to do whatever they choose to do to you and chant over you the spell while you sleep. That kind of brings back what happened to me that night in this house with the guy standing over my bed and I seriously hope it was none of you. No. Bad people. Um, I don't really believe that. I'm just kidding. But I can kind of like see that happening because I believe that there is magic out there. I know there is actually, I'll say that. And some people use it in very bad ways. And I can definitely agree that sometimes that could happen. I don't know for sure. You gotta stay skeptic. But I can agree with that a little bit. Some people think that when you're in a sleep paralysis that you're actually being held down by a bad spirit or a demon or whatnot that is actually possessing you. Some people say it's Satan that is actually inside of you holding you down and torturing you from the inside while you are trying to sleep. And that's one explanation. I don't know how I can explain that any further than you're under the possession of something bad. Speaking of demons, um, an incubus or a succubus, which is a demon who likes to sexually um, seduce and mate with a human, either to produce a human hybrid spawn with demon blood or to steal your soul. Some people think that you're being held down by the incubus. In a female case, you would be taken by the incubus or a succubus which is the one that goes after the male, and you're being taken advantage of while you're in sleep paralysis by that. I don't know. I don't... I... 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 I'm skeptic on that one, I'll say. And then there's some folklore that goes along with sleep paralysis that's, um... A lot of different regions and countries have the same folklore with just a different name for the being that does this, but I'll tell you the English and North American version of this is called Old Hag Syndrome. And basically, a lot of people report that they remember, especially as a young child, an old witch coming into their room. And what they do is the witch actually sits on the chest of the child and holds them down and tries to steal the life out of them. Um, people actually remember this happening to them as a child, and I mean, it's weird that a lot of people report the same thing, that it's an old witch. That's kind of creepy, though. I, I mean, I'm skeptic about it because I've never seen it, but it's weird that a lot of people report the same thing happening, and the same kind of person coming in the room and doing that. Now, I'm going to share with you the last paranormal possibility of sleep paralysis, which is astral projection. I save that for last because I, in my heart of heart, believe that a lot of cases of sleep paralysis is astral projection. If you guys remember, way back in the beginning of this video, which is very long, and I apologize, I said I was in the first person. I was looking up the stairs. I ran up the stairs in the first person. I jumped over the banister in first person. I ran into my room in first person. I jumped on top of my body in first person. I woke up and I couldn't move. That happens to more than just me. A lot of people have that happen when they're intentionally trying to astral project. And what happens is you astral project out of your body during the night and your soul or your spirit goes wandering around doing whatever and then it sees that you're going to wake up for whatever reason so it's like I better get back to the body so in my case my soul would have been rushing up the stairs to get back to me before I woke up oh crap I'm going to jump over the banister to get back or float whatever my soul does get in the room get on top of me to get back in my body but right before I got back in fully I was awake, so I couldn't move. I say that's a pretty damn good explanation for what happened. It kind of seems very plausible. Also, with the alien abduction cases where people are actually lifting up, and they think it's the aliens lifting them up out of their body, 
I can see that as some sort of astral projection too because people who are actually intentionally trying to astral project also, they actually feel their souls or spirits actually completely lifting up out of their bodies in that sort of fashion. So my take on sleep paralysis is that it is either a natural part of sleep or I think it could be astral projection. So tell me what you guys think and I hope you enjoyed that video. I did do quite a bit of research on that to try to make it the best I can for you guys. And if you like this video, please subscribe so I can bring you guys more videos like this. And thank you so much for watching again. Bye guys.